Okay, guys, welcome to Thoughts from the Pastor for this week. And what I'm talking about this week is aliens are real. Aliens are real. I don't know if you listened to uh, the Senate hearing, I think it's called, uh, that they had in the States there talking about aliens. I was in greatly encouraged by that. Uh, and I'm excited about this um, and talk this conversation because I think it just so, like, again, um, shows that the Word of God is, is, is reality, that the Word of God is true. Uh, a couple things. I want to talk about three things that really stood out to me. I don't know what stood out to you as you listened to that. Um, but three things that I was like, yeah, that's that's what we believe. That's the Word of God. That's why we trust in the Word of God. Because it's it's true. Um, so number one, number one, number one. Um, first, definitions, okay? Um, basically, one of the things that was said, and it was said a couple times, is that it is evident that um, there is intelligent life other than human here on this earth. And guys, what? That's exactly true. We know that from the Word of God. We know that there is something other than just humans going on here that is intelligent life interacting with the world around us. Right? We know that to be true. The Word of God teaches us that. Humans aren't the only things here on earth. Right? Uh, there is a, there is a, there is more going on. And though the more going on is connected to intelligent life, intelligent beings. And they have an agenda, right? And we know that there's two kind of separate agendas in that intelligent life that is here active on this earth that isn't human. We know that. The Word of God teaches us that. So huge. I'm like, amen. If that's, if that's what we're talking about, then the Word of God is, is, is right on. Uh, of course, you know what? Uh, 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 you know, as we understand the influence of specifically that, that the second group, okay? Because there's two groups of aliens, engaged on working on this world other than humans right we know we know that and we know one of those group one of those groups is towards and connected to uh and is a part of the 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 god that created this universe he is an intelligent being that is active on this world and his his uh those that are submitted to him in the spiritual realms uh angels right that they are active those are intelligent beings that are active here on this earth and we know that their agenda, though, is towards the salvation of, of mankind, to saving them from their sin and death. Uh, it's a moral. They have a moral compass. Uh, it's based on what is right and good and holy and just as, as, as is our creator, as is God. OK, so that's kind of one. We know the other side. And this is where I think that the majority of kind of that alien understanding comes from, unfortunately, is from this other side of that intelligent life that exists here on, on planet Earth. That is not human, and that is the demonic world. That that demons and are active, and they are endeavoring to deceive man. Why? Because they uh they are wanting to number one do what they want. They don't want to be submitted to under God, and number and 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 then number three, uh, they want to hurt hurt man. They're they're seeking who they can destroy, and so they deceive, and 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 so what's going to come out isn't going to be absolute biblical truth. They're they're not going to say, hey, we found demons. They exist. That's not what, that's not the 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 narrative that satan's gonna let let out um but we understand and we believe as biblical followers of jesus christ that there is intelligent life active on this earth that is not human we know that second thing that i found very interesting from uh these hearings which i think is just so awesome is that one of the guys said that um he was kind of being uh he wasn't saying things completely direct and one of the ladies was like well kind of a challenged him but his response is what what really what really made me kind of go aha see this is good uh it was that he said the um original or the uh, kind of the um the kind of the accepted origins of these beings the traditional origins of these beings needs to be expanded right so the traditional origin is that these little space creatures uh, that are intelligent life um, that, you know, for the most part, we don't really see and are kind of here, but aren't really super here, so to speak, um, that they are from way out in the outer space somewhere from another planet. And they've traveled here several billion light years and they're here now. That's kind of the traditional origins of of aliens. And he's saying that needs to be expanded. It needs to be considered differently. And I think absolutely, because we're going to find out, too, uh, that these 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 beings aren't necessarily from other planets, that they're actually from different 
And I think that the word dimensions is probably going to be used. They're, they're from a different dimension or biblically realm, right? And guys, that's exactly biblical too. We understand that demons and angels are, uh, God himself is a spirit and he dwells in heaven. It's a, it's a spiritual realm. Uh, and, 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 and we understand this because guys, even the Bible tells us that we physical humans are spirit, have spirits too. So the spirit, uh, and the physical interact in our world and interact in each of us. That's biblical. And so we know that when the, that demons are interacting in, in the physical world, uh, and, and, and they, they either travel to so the world, the word of God is not like profoundly clear about this. Uh, because it's not where our focus should be, right? But we understand that they either travel from the spiritual realm into the human realm, into the physical realm, or that's always the case, but they're not allowed absolute freedom. There, there, there needs to be some sort of, there is still governance by God. There's so, so there's spiritual rules that govern the spiritual realm as there is uh, physical rules that govern the, 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 the physical realm. Uh, I don't want to get into all the scripture and, and stuff like that today. I just know that for number one, we we as uh, Christians often think we we know way more than I think we do. I think the Bible in many ways is quite vague about exactly how it works. Like what is a, 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 like a spirit made up of? We, we, we get into the Hebrew and into the Greek, we understand that they're not matter like we are. But to say then that they're, you know, like what they are, we don't know. We don't know. We know that they're not visible and they're not, most of the time, we have to say most of the time, they're not physically, you can't physically touch them. Um, but yet we also know that, you know, the angels that went and visited um, uh, Abraham and then also uh, ended up uh, going into Sodom and Gomorrah that they were pretty physical they were able to grab Lot and pull him back into the house uh, there's some pretty natural you know physical attributes about about them at times and so so what do we know about them we know uh, to be quite honest we know a lot less than I think we claim and much of what we do know unfortunately comes from our interaction through Christian hist Christian history with the demonic world which is not a great source of information let's be honest because we recognize that demons are the language they speak are lies so when we're trying to figure out how this spiritual realm works uh predominantly through demonic interaction and exorcism and such as things like that and talking with demons uh guys we, we need to be careful right because because um, <coughs> we're going to be deceived. Why? Because that's all they speak is lies. And I've uh, read a couple books on even pastors, even Christians, trying to explain how things work in the demonic realm, uh, which, you know, at some points I'm just like, well, this is there, there's aspects of this that don't align to Scripture very, very well. And we need to be careful because we are not given that in the Word of God. And to take um, the, the, the word of demons as truth is foolish. And so anyways, anyways, I don't want to get into that too much, but the point is, uh, yeah, these beings exist. These beings exist and their origin is, is going to be uh, kind of, we're going to see it come out is going to be more of a, uh, um, if it comes out, if it comes out more, it'll, it'll be more of a realm kind of idea or a dimensional travel rather than kind of space travel, so to speak. And that just aligns with scripture, guys, right? I mean, this should excite us as believers in Jesus Christ to say, yeah, this is where we see. Now, and not everything that's going to be communicated is going to be truth, right? Because we're dealing with the demons and their language is the language of Lucifer, the language of Satan, which is lies, right? Those that are in Christ speak truth because Jesus Christ speaks the language of truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> God speaks truth. Satan speaks lies, right? He is the father of lying. His language is that of deception, right? Which is like a massive point of scripture. Anyway, so as we understand this, we need to be very careful what we glean from, from the demonic world and in interactions there. But we also need to recognize, hey, this is, this is, this is, there's some truths here that align that we see in scripture and that we see the world, you know, uh, starting to understand or being willing to kind of admit at this point, which is super cool. Uh, thirdly, one of the guys shared that his interactions with these beings, whatever connection that kind of interaction was, 
um, was terrifying. And I think that, yeah, that, <laughs> that lines. The demonic world are here to deceive us, and they're here to destroy us, right? Uh, it says, Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, roaring lion, looking to see who he can destroy, devour, right? Like it's, uh, they're not here to, to make life really that much, that better for us. Uh, they're, they're here to be, um, to, to make us into servants, into slaves, to bring us a false freedom. Uh, and that is basically everything against God, you know, to defy God's authority and power, but also to, to gain themselves. Like Satan wants to be in the position of God. He wants to be worshipped. Uh, we see that uh, towards the end, the Antichrist, uh, who is um, what is often commonly understood as possessed by Satan. Towards the end there, he sets himself up uh, 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 as God and he declares himself as God. We, we recognize from, from Revelation as well that the um, the false prophet or the priest uh, gets the people of the world to, to worship, to worship the Antichrist. Uh, so there's this, there's this desire for, for uh, the demonic world and for Satan especially to, to be worshipped um, and, uh, and for his own purposes, right? Um, so, so, so interesting stuff coming out. Interesting stuff. Now, now be, be clear. There's, I'm not saying that everything that's going to be communicated is going to be true. I, I don't think it will be. Uh, there'll be a lot of lies twisted in. Why? Because we're dealing with the demonic world. We're dealing with, um, the, you know, the, the father of lies. Uh, they're going to try to deceive. But guys, think about this. Think about this. If the word of God is true and you're a country that wants to be a superpower, you want to have all the edge. You want to have all the the kind of the key top technologies and stuff. You want your soldiers to be powerful. And if this word of God is true, and it is true, then there are spirits out there called demons that have incredible power. Don't you think that if you are a country that you should study that, that you should? And, and because, guys, this is the world that we live in. This is truth. There are angels. There are demons. They do have power. They are afforded a certain amount of power and authority from God that he allows, right? Now, wouldn't you think that you would want that? Like, how do we make our soldiers powerful like that? How do we make, like, how do we become powerful? Don't you think that's worth studying? If you were a secular institution government and you didn't really believe in god but you recognized hey there are there is these powerful you know beings that are here that are intelligent that seemed in, in many ways seem to be able to do things that that we can't yet um don't you think it's worth studying and guys this is the thing this is true there are intelligent beings that are powerful uh, that, um, you know, that, that exists on this planet. And so when it comes out that, yeah, maybe we got to admit this at this point, we, we're trying to, you know, convince everyone that there's only the, the, the physical and there's only what we can see. And if we can't see it and if science can't explain it, then it's not real, but that doesn't seem to be the case, does it? Wow, what a shocker, right? Because that's what this talks about. Um, so I'm excited about it, and I think it's uh, very interesting. I have, you know, when people talk about the technology and stuff like that, I think, you know, there's a couple different views we can take on that. But uh, but some very interesting stuff coming out, which, which I think aligns to Scripture, and I think to some degree is going to connect very strongly to um, you know, some of the things that unfold as we get closer to Jesus Christ's return. So something to be paying attention uh, to and uh, and to be watching. And I pray that it's an encouragement to your faith for you to be like, yeah, you know what, your faith, that like, yeah, you know what, we're not alone on this earth and that there are other beings. And, and the Bible's right about that. And we need to be careful of that because I think the angels are going to be engaged in, in doing God's bidding, right? The angels are at war with the, in, with, the, with, the, with the forces of darkness in this world, in the spiritual realm, and they are their focus is on doing what God calls them to, right? Uh, demons have a different agenda. 
And I think probably most of the intelligent beings that, that man has interacted with that were alien, as we're calling them, uh, are probably not angels. They're probably demons, right? But let us, as believers in Jesus Christ, remember that we need to be paying attention to the fact that angels exist as well. And that we could be, by showing hospitality to strangers, we could be entertaining angels, right? Let's believe this. This is what our Bible tells us. Here, I'm going to read you some scripture before I go, uh, because I think it aligns to, 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 to what we're talking about here. And it just says, it just shows us that, yeah, it, it talks about this kind of stuff in the Word of God. Okay, uh, listen to this. Luke 4, 1 to 13. Luke 4, 1 to 13. I'm going to read it quick. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, this is just after his baptism, left the Jordan, was led by the Spirit, the Spirit, which is an intelligent, powerful being, the Spirit of God, which which interacts with us on this earth. Amen? Right? So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to call him an alien, okay? Uh, but in terms of how we're understanding, if aliens are these beings that are intelligent, that are engaged in their own kind of doings here on earth that aren't human, then guys, yeah, this is, this is, it's what it's talking about. Um, and I mean, you can't take it too far, right? Because if you're thinking little green Martians, uh, obviously you're, you're, you're missing out here. But anyways, uh, into the wilderness there where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, this is the devil, this is the Antichrist, this is a spirit, fallen angel, right? Said to him, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it, was, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Um, the devil led him up to the high place. I like, I like what it says in uh, Matthew, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Anyway. The devil led him up to the high place and showed him uh, in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all the authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I will give it to, to anyone I, and I can give it to anyone I want. If you worship me, it will be yours. And Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. And that's a true, not only as Jesus says it here to, to, to Satan and in his temptation, but it's a true statement for all of us to remember, to serve the Lord and, um, and to worship the Lord and serve him only. And I pray that today your life reveals that as a follower of Jesus Christ, you are worshiping God only and serving him only. Amen. Not serving self or serving, uh, you know, anything. Uh, the devil led him to a Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, this time Satan says it is written. <coughs> um, Satan says it is written. So he's twisting the word of God here, right? This is what he does. Pay attention. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will let, lift you up in, uh, in their hands and that you will not strike your foot against the stone. So, so Satan's like, oh, but the Bible says this. And Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord God to the test. So even though that is written in the word that God would do that for his son, for Jesus. Jesus says, yeah, but I'm not going to put him to the test just to prove to you who I am, right? Amen, amen, right? Jesus knows who he is. He believes who he is. He understands that. He's so secure in who he is in the Father, that he is the Son. He doesn't have to prove that to Satan, right? And to test God by doing that. So we see in the scriptures here that Satan twists scripture. So let us know the word of God so that when Satan's taking one little bit of scripture here and saying, hey, you guys, you should do this. We go, no, no, no. When we understand the full counsel of scripture, we know that you're twisting that for your own purposes. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. So we see the devil exists. Um, also, a little further on in that same chapter, we see... Um, Satan, uh, sorry, Jesus interacting with demons in the synagogue. There was a man possessed by a demon. Okay. So this is an intelligent being, maybe not super intelligent, depending on the demon, but an intelligent being, right? An impure spirit 
that it exists in our on the earth, right? He cried out at the top of his voice, um, go, go away, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus says, be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down be before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and each um, and said to each other, what words these what words these are? With authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits, and they come out. And the news of him uh, spread throughout the surrounding area. And then a little bit further, in 30, uh, 38, it says this. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the, the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and Jesus, asked, Jesus was asked to help her. So he bent over and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sicknesses, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Messiah. Amen? Guys, we live in a, spiritually, we live in a spiritual realm. There are beings... From a different realm, from a different dimension, let's say, that exist here on planet Earth that are intelligent, that are not human. These are our aliens. They exist. And then, of course, as the followers of Jesus Christ, we're giving passages of Scripture, like 2 Thessalonians, right? 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, 5 to 12. I'm just going to note that one. Um, you know, when it says the secret powers of lawlessness are already at work. Right? They're here. They're at work. Uh, kind of connecting that to, to the Antichrist and then to the devil, right? Uh, then we're told in Ephesians 6, and this is the one I want to kind of close with. Ephesians 6, starting in... Um, starting, oh, where am I here? Ephesians 6, there we go. Starting in verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against the human aspect. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So not only the spiritual forces of evil are amongst us here, but they're in the heavenly realms as well. If you want to say dimensions, if you will, in order to kind of connect us to what, what you know, what's going to be communicated, I think, or what's trying to be communicated. Guys, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but our battle in Christ as we follow him is against these intelligent beings that are from a different realm that are set on darkness and the defiance of God, um, that are here to deceive the, the world. And for us as, as, as Christians, um, when the secular world starts to go, you know what, we're, we're not alone. Uh, I think that as Christians, we better recognize that as well. Amen. Amen. Because the word of God tells us, uh, guys, you're not alone. There are other beings, not like, not yourself, like you, that, that they're not human. And they're intelligent, and they're 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 here to seek and destroy. They're here to pull you away from the truth of God. Of God, be be aware. Get your armor on. Stand up and fight. Amen. Uh, I was I was encouraged when I heard this, and I pray that uh, I pray that as you kind of take time to maybe consider it prayerfully and going through your word, that you're like, yeah, you know what? We're not alone. Let's let's get in the fight. And of course, we fight by, read the rest of the Ephesians, uh, that chapter, uh, by putting on the armor of God and chiefly through prayer, seeking and, 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 and following and uh, walking in the spirit of God through Jesus Christ, who is greater, who is greater than he uh, that is in this world. Amen. Amen. Guys, have a good and God-filled week, remembering that... Uh, that um yeah we're not alone there's there's darkness out there there's demons out there um aliens let's say uh evil aliens out there 
But, but, but there's also the great uh, God of heaven, who is an intelligent being far superior than any other being, uh, who created this world, who sent his son to die on the cross to save us from our sin and from death. Amen. And in him, we have victory and salvation and hope for eternity. And I pray that you're living in that hope this week. Uh, as you kind of take in some of these things. Guys, have a good and God-focused week.